Jordan, thank you for coming. Great to connect with my fellow Android developers and other Google tech enthusiasts. Um, I'm Alejandro Stamato, lead Android engineer at HubSpot. And in this talk, we're going to be talking about uh, the text field APIs in Jetpack Compose. Most specifically, how we'll do a quick recap of the current state of the text field API to the text fields, how these current API shape and its shortcomings led to the team really making some decision as to rethink how we build text fields in Compose with a new API text field V2. And finally, what the future of this API looks like in a unified way in which we, we uh, you can use the ultimate uh, best text field API. So let's first do a little bit of recap and start from, the, from what we have right now. Very quickly on Compose, um, in case you're not too familiar with it, these are newish um, library or set of libraries to build UI in Android. It's not a single library, it's a collection of libraries. And in particular, in the UI case, it's built in layers. So first we have, so we have material, uh, foundation, and UI layer. And in material, it's just like a, really a styling layer on top of foundation. So when we're referring to material, we're going to be using text field and outline text field. These are components that are already implementing the material design specs for building a text field with a specific behavior and UI that is very material-like. And then it's built on top of foundation. Uh, and, and here in this layer of foundation, there are uh, elements called basic X, in this case, basic text field. All of the concepts that, we're gonna, that I'm going to be explaining today applies in both material and basic uh, components, both material and foundation layers. But I'm going to be referring to basic text field a lot because this is the layer in which the team is working to fix, like the part that has like all the behavior and complex state management that you don't get to use that much, unless you're implementing your own uh, design system. So there is that quick recap. Um, so right now, basic, <laughs> basic text field API shape looks like this. You have a composable function, basic text field, um, and you have a value or a string value or text field value uh, that you pass in. You define your variable text by remember uh, Sable. You have your state. You pass it in a state, and then you have a callback on value change uh, where you update your state. And this very harmless API, that's very simple, um, comes with a couple of drawbacks. Um, for every, for any text field currently in Compose, you have at play at all times three copies of your state. The one that we just saw, the one that you control, the one that you define variable text by remember saveable, all this fun stuff that you can update manually based on whatever the user typed. That's one copy of your state. The keyboard has another copy of your state because it needs to do some crazy things that keyboards do. For example, if you type a word, uh, it makes me smile, it suggests you an emoji you smile. Then for doing that, it needs a copy of your state. Also to suggest you the most likely word you're able to type next. Uh, with predictive, like the, the, those the suggestions that the keyboard does in predicting what you're going to type next, uh, it needs a copy of your current state as well. And then there is a coordinator in between that as you type, tells your stakeholder to update and then when you are updated, tells the keyboard back, OK, everything is updated. And there is really this sync loop very tight um, that if everything works, everything works. And you don't notice that anything is wrong. But that, that sounds like very simple to explain. Or maybe it doesn't sound simple to explain. But essentially, under the hood, to achieve all of that that I just described, synchronizing all of these three states is very complex. It leads to a lot of um, border cases or edge cases. There is a bunch of code under the hood that you don't need to pay attention that does exactly that. It um, needs to know if the text changed or the selection changed to make these updates or not because you wouldn't be really wanting to update the text under the hood if just the selection changed or the composition, which is not to be confused with compose composition. See, only explaining it is like very, very tiresome. Um, more code to synchronize all these states. And because it's so complex for a team to be doing that under the hood, so you don't have to, if you introduce any asynchronicity in the process of typing, things go like literally things derailed very quickly. Um, and how can you be adding asynchronous behavior very quickly by just following the architecture guidelines that exist today? 
The architecture guidelines for defining state in Compose suggest you that you define your state with the state flow, and you do it like when, and you do it like this with um, the mutable state flow, for example, and then you um, have your card number and you expose it like this, and then on Compose side you just uh, maybe on value change call a validation function from the view model to update a card number, and then this update card number in the view model goes to the backend. On, uh, to validate what you just typed, goes to the backend, asks the backend, is this card validated properly? Cool, I wait until the backend responds, and only then I update to my latest state. All of that is asynchronous, and by doing that, what you can cause is something like this. I don't know if it's clear from the GIF there, but we're typing a bunch of numbers very quickly. Imagine that you're like a fast typer. I'm missing half of the uh, elements that I'm typing, and and like we're typing a lot of characters, they are not all reflected there. If you delete things, the cursor starts jumping back and forth, you're missing events. It, everything goes wrong very quickly. And this is because, in a nutshell, um, the loop, this type type loop that we've spoken about breaks as elements are to be waited for, but are missed. And now the keyboard is in the state of all of the three elements are, in, are not synchronized because they are not the same. And this is a situation that it's impossible to recover from that you need to kill the app or you need to like change your code essentially this is com this problem is very complex it's a sync up loop of the text field we've documented to great extent and talked about it in a couple of blogs um so if you're interested to know more definitely do check out that talk and this blog post where it describes in great detail but essentially yes the problem of state management another problem is the visual transformation problem um, what do we talk about visual transformation? We're referring to, for example, implementing a text field for entering a credit card number or a phone number, and you want to change how you show it. The, the, num the credit card number is only one, but you want to maybe group in types of fours for a credit card number, what spaces, and parentheses for a phone number. For this, there is an API called visual transformation, and it's a functional interface that um, has a filter function that uh, transforms the original text into a text that you want to display on the screen. But the important thing to remember is for this to work, what you need to do is to provide an offset mapping. This is tell from the original text where in the transformed text it's going to place your character, because it could be different. So for example, um, if we have a text field entering a verification code, what we want to do is maybe group in triplets with a space in between every three characters. Um, and what you can do is first you implement this visual transformation interface. You define how the text is going to look like in the first three characters and the second three characters, and that is fine. But then this is the problem, the transformation thing, like the mappings. With, like if it is, if my text is in the first three characters, it's fine. But then if not, place a cursor, and it's like a very, very complex scenario. Providing these mappings is not super simple. And um, the, you have to define where the cursor is going to be after the third character, because it could map to different positions. And it's very easy to do it wrong. It can lead to a lot of, it, it has led to a lot of very shady, obscure bugs um, that were not super easy to understand, because what is that? offset is not in my range. I have no idea what this means. For that, the uh, team provided an API called validation offset mapping, called, uh, called validate, validating offset mapping to provide more information to the user. Um, sorry. <laughs> yes, so we provided this API to give more information to the user as to what the problem was, um, but did it because the Bugs changed a little bit, and then the bugs kept on coming. So it was like it, it was a step in the right direction, but it wasn't enough. So all of these two um, problems were enough for the team to start reconsidering writing a different text field API. But now that they were like thinking about it, they they imagined what the uh, best text field API would look like, and they realized that, for example, what one thing that they can do is provide as you type a list of the changes that you've just typed, right? Because in something like this, on value change, you just receive the new version of your text. You don't know what changed. You have to do the diffing yourself. And in long texts, this can be really expensive to do and very complex to keep track. 
think about the markdown editor. It could be it could become really complex. So how about we have a list of changes of what has has just changed? And then finally, something like this, right? Um, even defining single line true or false can be really um, confusing in the current API because yeah, single single line it's a parameter that is a boolean, but then you can define at the same time with the same constructor mean lines and max lines. And what's the result of merging all of these configurations? No one knows. Um, so they, that can be fixed as well. So fast forward to the present, onto the new APIs. So what has the team done and uh, what do we have right now? And by right now, in the new world, in the new text field API, and by now I mean Compose 1.6 X alpha, like the alpha that you can download right now after this talk, you can download that latest version of Compose, um, which is in alpha still, um, less version of Compose and try all of this yourself. Great, so let's say we're building up a sign up screen that has two fields, right? Username and password. So before again, a quick recap, um, username by remember savable and your mutable state. And this is how you would define state before, basic text field, you pass in the value and the callback. The first thing that we need to do now to define our state is a function called remember text field state. And this will cre create and remember a text field state type uh, that will also survive process step because the user remembers savable under the hood. It receives an initial text for convenience and it also receives an initial selection. We don't need that. We don't, like it has empty in both. Like you don't even need to provide an initial selection. Uh, but it has this parameter as well, empty in, by default in both cases. And this pattern is familiar to us already because to define the state in something like lazy column, you would use something like remember lazy state and pass it in. So it, should be like very familiar uh, function. And the other thing that changes is that we no longer have a callback. Ish, exactly, we're gonna see that later, but we don't no longer have a callback, it seems. Instead, what we do is we just define basic text field to, I know, very, very creative name, and we pass in the state as a parameter and that is it. You don't need to do anything, you don't need to manually update the state. The state is updated for you. And this is also very similar to what we do with lazy list state, for example, for example, because the scroll state is automatically updated for you. You're not updating the scroll state manually, you just use it. Um, so think about it like that. There's a lot of internal magic going on that you don't have to worry about. If you need to hoist your state to observe it in the view model to apply business logic or whatever, you can perfectly do that, just define. Obviously, you don't need remember lazy list state because that's a composable function. It's to be called in composition. You just use text field state, which is a normal data class. Just define it like that, and that's it. And then in compose, just call view model dot this um, state. Very quickly on styling, you can use. Uh, we said we're not using material now. This basic text field two is not styled, right? Because it's only the functional in foundation component. But you can style it manually, just like you're used to using things like the textile block for things like line spacing and for things like font size, font color, um, line spacing, all this fun stuff. All of the modifier system in particular for styling using border, which is what I've used to style the sign up components there so they look a little bit prettier. Else you would just see nothing really. Else you would just type on a blank space. So I guess I wanted to give it a border so we know, so I knew where the text field was in the screen. And then decorator, which is a fancy rename for decoration box. If you're used to outline text field, uh, gives you more control on your draw space to implement a component that looks like that. And it's probably what the material team would do when they had to implement outline text field two on top of this, which is not there yet, but will be. Great, so we probably want the username to be a single line tall. And how do we do that now? We said that this was not super amazing. Our new solution is a parameter called line limit. And it's as simple as configuring text field line limit dot single line. That's it. There is no confusion. Is someone confused still? Probably not. I am not. So uh, yeah, pretty straightforward. Single line, the text field is always a single line tall. There is a vertical scroll in case you overflow past your limits. And it ignores new lines in your text, like any single line text field would do. In contrast to multi-line, in which you define max lines, mix line, the, start, the text starts being 
uh, mean line in height tall and it moves to max. And if you overflow on that, there is a vertical scroll enabled for you. When in single line, it was horizontal scroll. Um, so there is that, very straightforward on styling. And that's in on styling. Let's talk about observing state, right? So um, our username field works just by doing what we did. But now what we want to do is observe our state to do some validation to it, uh, even apply business logic. So we can host our state to the view model outside of composition. That's fine. And we define a variable username has error, which can be true or false depending on a validation that we do in the backend. Um, we can serve our state with the snapshot flow. If you're familiar with Compose, this API will be familiar too. It just takes a state and can convert it into observable state uh, to do something. For, and, and, and this is so common in Compose that there is actually extension function for it for text field state, which is called um, as a text as flow. So this does exactly the same thing for your convenience. Then we call map latest from flow to run some asynchronous validation to it. Uh, we go to the backend, we validate our input. And we can even use debounce from flow to, you know, as sort of a buffer before firing validation to avoid overcalculating or over firing the, the network. And that's it. We use state in to transform this into observable state flow, and, and, and that's it. That, that's how you would serve your state and do something with it. On the UI, what we need to do is read username has error, which is state flow, just like we read any other UI state flow. And based on if the value is true or false, we show maybe a text or, or something. Another convenient alternative to observe state to perform asynchronous operations on each character type would be to use um, something like text as flow dot collect latest block that gives us a, um, oops, yeah, magic. That gives, <laughs> this will give us a, a, a coroutine scope to run something asynchronous. And what I wanted to say is that this is also very common to do. And because it's so common to do, there is also another extension function for it. So you don't have to write that every time. That is called for each text value. That's the same thing. You can use it in the same way. And, and now inside this, you can run any asynchronous validation that you need. For example, we can rewrite the code that we just did. Um, define a suspend function, validate username, and then for each new character type, we can run the same asynchronous validation, define the value of username has error, and then in the compose side, we launched, uh, we, we create a launched effect to observe the typing events, because again, like this, validate username, it's a suspend function. And then we just have to observe this username has error value or not, just like we did before, and then we show the error label or not. Um, the final disclaimer that I want to do on observing state is that um, this API that we had before, basic text field one with the value and value change, was so common and so popular that, that the team originally did not intend to create it like this, but then they, um, they created the same version of this for basic text field two with the value and the value change. There is, so there is a way that you can write the same API shape. Now you might be wondering, we said that this API shape had a bunch of errors, had um, allowed you to uh, do some asynchronous validation that would be like very detrimental to your, um, to your, how your UI performed and stuff like that. How does this solve anything? And the, the thing is that under the hood, the team made a lot of changes, so these asynchronous issues no longer happen. So there is that. Um, there will be more information coming up at the end of the talk. I will give you some resources so you can read more about this API shape. Yes, a lot of under the hood magic. Exactly. Um, great. So all of that for observing state. But what we, we talked a lot about <laughs> observing state. But what if we? Okay. What if I actually need to um, access my edit session and programmatically change? the value of my text field. And this is a very common thing that you want to do, right? The almost most simplest case is to clear a text field, right? You press an X and you clear my text. And to do this, there is a new API called text field buffer. Um, text field buffer, this class gives you a lot of information about the text field current state, like the length of the current text and current selection, if you have any, plus 
a bunch of very useful methods to alter that text, like insert, delete, uh, append. And finally, methods to alter the selection and reposition in your cursor. So how do I implement my clear button? Uh, very simple. We just imagine that we are defining our um, state in our view model like before. What we do is like, let's say we have a clear field uh, function there. And we do the text field dot edit. And when we, once we access this method dot edit, we are in text field buffer land. And now we can use all of the things that we said before, um, all of the methods and all of the things. So for example, we want to delete everything and reposition the cursor to uh, the start. And yet again, this is so common to do that we actually don't, don't have to write any of that. We just have to write the text field state dot clear field. And inside this method is exactly what I just said. <laughs> it has like the same, the same code. One great thing about Compose is that you can actually jump in the code and it's all Kotlin code. So it's very simple to read. So yeah, um, you, can, you can check it out yourself. And, and what if, I have another example. What if like, um, if my username is wrong or my validation fail, I just want to like select the text so the user can very quickly just type another one. Um, remember that we were observing this uh, text on every character typed. Um, so what we can do is just identify if we have an error and if we have an error, call the method highlight and the method highlight, what it does is again, text field dot edit and select all is that simple. You can do it like that. And you can also do it in composition if you need to. Great. So now all of that for text state, all of that is solved. Uh, we, we've, we've seen a bunch of text field state uh, APIs. Now on to the visual transformation problem. So um, we talk about how to observe changes in the text field. And now um, we're going to go back to the second problem, that, the second biggest problem that we have. And here is a picture that I like to draw in my mind to talk about this problem. And so essentially, we have a user typing on a keyboard. And we want to maybe not allow everything that comes from the keyboard to be stored in our text field. We want to like apply some, uh, some transformation to it. We call these filters because we stop you from typing anything. A, a good use case is, for example, if my text field only accepts a certain type of input, like num only numbers or only uppercase uh, uh, letters. Um, so this, this transformation is applied before the state is stored in the text field. Um, so it's transformative and it's only one way and cannot be reversed. Whereas on the other spectrum of the, yes, on the other spectrum, we have uh, something called output transformation. So you can think about it that it will be applied every time to the text field because it's just taking the current text field and displaying it in somewhere else. And a perfect example for that is formatting a phone number or even a password field because Obviously, the text field state in a password field is not the stars that you see on the screen, but what is stored under the hood. Um, okay, we're gonna see we're gonna see an example right now. So, oof, <laughs> great. So, um, input transformation will look like this. We are in this side, and we have an um, API called input transformation, and you receive a transformation. Transform input, <laughs> um, a transform input method that will receive like the original text and the changes that you just received in the form of a text field buffer, the API that I showed before. Because among other things that I described, you know, the methods to delete, insert, and the information about the text state or the selection, text field buffer also has the list of changes that have just happened. So you can choose what to do with them. And those changes are identified by the amount of changes and where exactly the changes happen with the ranges. Um, so for example, for a verification code for digits only, the way to implement it will be to use this input transformation field um, and do something like, OK, I take a look at my changes. If they are digits, I accept it. And I, if, I, if they are not digits, I just revert all the changes and that's it. Look at how simple it is. You don't need to be um, doing any of the crazy mappings that we saw before. You just get what changed and discard them if they don't, if you don't need to, if you don't need to, to, to accept them. And you just use them in Compose and that's it. Another example is, for example, um, 
uh, well, actually, we have two examples more, um, to just limit the amount of uh, string length and uppercase transformation. So to limit the amount of string length or max length in cars <laughs> transformation, there is some built-in input transformation for you for convenience because these operations are super common. So to limit your input to six characters, you call this input transformation, and that's it. Super simple. For all transforming your text to all caps, you also can call a built-in transformation. And to call them both, you use a chain method then, much like this reminds you of the modifier chain as well. Um, and it will just be applied sequentially. Like first, you would apply uh, cutting your input on six, uh, by six character and then changing everything to all caps. And there is that for output transformation or the way to change the way in which you display things on the screen. We are in this side of the graph now. And for example, we're taking again the verification code example in triples of six. We can uh, use a new API called output transformation and trans uh, transform output uh, method that will just give you the buffer, like the current state of your text. So you can do crazy modifications if you need to. And those crazy modifications will be just, for example, if you have, like in your first, uh, you take your first three characters, you insert a space in the middle, and then the rest of the text. Again, this is too, this is very simple compared to what we needed to do before. Remember that it looked very similar, but we also needed to, we also needed to um, supply that mapper, that mapper of from the original to the transform text. That was the part that was very inconvenient. So we do that. We, um, we group, we insert the space in between, and that is it. That's all our ample transformation done. Just bear in mind that as per right now, this output transformation is not merged yet. I checked and it's not merged yet. Uh, but it will be and it won't change too much. So that is that. Let's take a look at the last example of output transformation, which is a password field. Um, because it's like a very clear example of output transformation in which the state that is stored doesn't match the state that is displayed on the screen. So what we have before to define a, sec a basic text field that was a password for our sign up screen, say, was just a regular basic text field. And the important part was visual transformation parameter. And you will pass in a password transformation that will convert the input type to asterisks. Now what we have is, again, the text as we are used to. And we have a completely different composable function called <laughs> basic secure text field. Sorry, I don't remember the name of my heart. Uh, basic secure text field and um, co completely different uh, composable function that has some optimizations under the hood. The important uh, parameters are, among others, text obfuscation mode that will allow you to uh, control the, the behavior of the last typed character. For example, by default, you have reveal last typed, or you will have um, hidden if you are, as you type, you are not seeing the last uh, typed character like, like there. You're never seeing the last character that you're typing, or maybe visible as in you're always seeing the last character type and this is like very it's a convenience method to just temporarily toggle the uh, visibility of the characters to implement maybe a button that you can click and you can show the password or not depending on the visibility of that button you would do something like uh, define your state and if like you know if last uh, if the state is true you would use remember um reveal last type or visible you know something like this would be very simple to implement Basic secure text field also allows the team, like having a different completely altogether a component on top of basic text field too, allows the team to do optimizations on memory, um, preventing things like memory spoofing, like clearing them, the state is if it's no longer necessary and not keeping it around too much. Um, char masking like we did, and some defined behaviors like, for example, altering the text toolbar, for example, for a normal text field, you can copy and cut. But for a basic secure text field, you wouldn't be able to copy and cut. So there is that. We have to, uh, have to uh, do a little 
a little passing of the slides because we don't have time for all of this. But I just wanted to let you know what's coming. Uh, on the interest of time, we covered a lot of things that we can do, um, like uh, managing state and input transformation, output transformation. There is a lot that I couldn't cover um, on the new API. And you can try it out right now. It's under, it's under construction. It's in a different package called Text2. So please do try it out. Like the idea is that it's no longer going to be called Text2 when it's stabilized. But uh, for now, the team really wanted to have all of this separated. So you can try it out. Uh, you can give feedback as well. And the way to give feedback to Google is by opening a tra issue in an issue tracker or joining maybe the Kotlin LAN community. Um, that there is a Slack channel there. And you can join the conversation in the slash compose channels. Or you can reach out to the team directly to let them know if, the, if you have some crazy text field case that the current API does not accommodate. The team needs to know right now. There's literally nowhere at time because um, they're working, like they're paying attention now. So it's a great way to kind of consider what can change. We can take a little picture of this and uh, remember. Um, remember to go back, get back to us. And great. So what's next? Output transformation will be stabilized. Um, Multi-style text editing is a very requested feature from Basic Text Field 1, and the team will work, be working on this next. And material wrappers, so you don't have to style everything yourself. Something like output, output text field 2 or whatever it is called, there will be something on top of the current APIs. Just to finalize, if you want to know more about all of this, we wrote a blog post on this. There's like a way <laughs> less fast. <laughs> version of everything that I talked about in a two-part blog series. And you can catch this, um, this blog, or you can watch this talk in a longer version. Um, and you can watch it as many times as you want, because maybe I wasn't clear <laughs> right now. Um, but yeah, I don't have a, like, you know, a go back button, but this video has. And uh, so yeah, you can check out that. Uh, it's a talk that I gave with my colleague in Joy-Con London. So that's it from me. I don't know if we have time for questions, but if I don't catch you later, you can catch me later. And if I don't, thank you so much and enjoy the rest of Fest.